Hey there, it's Chris Ferdinandi, the Vanilla JS guy here. Last time we looked at an article by Ari Stothanopoulos on how they converted jQuery into vanilla JavaScript. And I walked through how I would approach the same thing and how, um, how I handle that. So we did that live and we ended up with some functional code uh, that looks a bit like this and replicates what the jQuery was doing. Today, I thought it might be interesting to take it a little bit farther, just like Ari did in their article, and actually replicate some of jQuery's features with vanilla JavaScript. So rather than just writing out this verbose kind of code here, actually whipping together something that allows us to write our code jQuery style, but hard coding it ourselves. And this will give us a better sense of how jQuery actually works under the hood. Now, full disclosure, I don't have any of this planned out. I'm going to be largely winging it. I might get stuck. Um, you'll get to see me kind of debug through some of that stuff if it happens. But this is a really good way for you to get a glimpse at what my coding style is like. If this kind of thing seems interesting to you, uh, one thing I did want to point out to you is I have a few resources that you can use to learn how to do this yourself. Um, so over at gomakethings.com under my resources tab, I have links to my courses and books and my online workshops. The courses and books, my Vanilla JS Pocket Guides, are short, focused, and made for beginners. Um, and for today's project, uh, the Level Up Bundle or Complete Bundle are going to include a lot of the stuff that we're going to be looking at today, um, particularly things like writing libraries um, and uh, how you actually go about doing that. Uh, so if you just want to dig into today's topic, writing libraries is the guide you want. But if you want some of the broader stuff, one of the bundles is probably a really good value. Um, now, if this is particularly interesting to you and you're someone who learns better through projects and hands-on work, I also want to let you know about my Vanilla JS Academy workshops. I have registration for those open right now with an early bird sale that will get you 40% off. And the next session is running at the end of the month. Um, and for today's project, structure and scale is definitely the one you want to take a look at. Um, this is going to dig into concepts like creating libraries, object-oriented programming, JavaScript classes, and then some advanced stuff like web components, ES modules, and service workers. Um, so anyways, enough of that. Let's actually dig into this. I'm going to take last episode's code, and we're just going to continue running with it. Um, so, uh, here's what we've got. Um, and we want to end up with something that allows us to work a little bit more like this. Uh, so, um, let's start by creating a JavaScript class. Um, so, uh, we are going to, um, we're going to say class um, and let's give this a name. Um, hmm. What do I want to call it? I actually really like uh, the jQuery dollar sign shorthand. So I'm just going to use that. Um, so we'll go, we'll create class dollar sign. Um, and inside our class, we are going to have a constructor object. That's going to accept the selector. This is going to effectively replace query selector and query selector all. Um, but we want to be able to um, uh, we want to be able to just grab the thing and get it back out. Um, so uh, we will create a constructor, um, and we are going to say um, this. Uh, oof, what do we want to do here? Um, we want to we want to get our items. So let's say this. Um, we'll call them LMs for the elements. And it's going to be document query selector all. We'll pass in the selector as an argument. Uh, and then this returns a node list, but arrays can be really nice to work with. So we're going to create an array from whatever we get back. Uh, and just to make sure that this is working, um, what I want to be able to do is say um, let, let's actually, we're going to do the same thing we did before. I'm going to comment this stuff out like that. Um, and I want to be able to say, get my menu and, uh, we'll do, um, we'll do this. So we will say menu 
And if I were to console log menu, I should have a new item here, uncaught. Class constructor cannot be invoked without new. That's right. So we need to do new. And now we get back this object with our elements. Sweet. Uh, and so we've got one match. Um, cool. Uh, so um, we are, uh, we're going to do a handful of things. Uh, so let's make this very narrow. We're just going to focus on the things that we need to do. So in this case, it's, I am going to, I want to make note of these right here, right? So we need, we need add class, remove class, CSS, and what was the other thing? Uh, oh, it's just CSS. Okay, cool. Uh, so we can do that very easily. Um, all right, sweet. Let me delete this out of here. Cool. So um, what's going to happen is, uh, or what's happening under the hood here, is when we create our constructor, um, when, we, when we invoke this library or this class with the new keyword, uh, and we pass in our selector, it's going to take that variable, pass it into the document query selector all method, pass that into array from to convert that node list into an array, and then assign it to the LM's property for that particular instance. Um, and uh, we can then use that property in some additional methods on that object to do things. So, um, uh, for example, um, I guess one other thing we need to do now that I'm thinking about it is the find method. Do I really want to recreate this? Um, I guess I do. Um, all right. So we'll add that to the list too. Here we go. So we'll say find, and this is going to give us a better sense of what's happening under the hood. Uh, so we'll start with that one. So we'll say find um, selector. And then what that is going to do is that's actually going to return a new instance of our class with the provided selector. Only instead of using document, it's going to use um, kind of the, the parent element um, of our thing. So let's, uh, let's make this make a little bit more sense here. So we're going to add context equals document. So we're going to say, um, instead of always using document, we'll use context, but we're setting a default parameter value here of document. So if no argument is passed in, we'll use document. Otherwise we'll use context with find. Um, I am going to, uh, I'm going to return new dollar sign, uh, and then we're going to pass in the selector. And for the context, we're going to say this LMs zero. So we're going to use the first item as the, uh, as the context. So let's just, let's do this, right? So the constructor object, uh, it's good to have documentation here. So we're going to say string element, uh, and then this is going to return nothing. So we're going to say the selector to use and then the context in which to search for the element. No, uh, the element to search for the selector in. That's really badly written in English, but that's okay. Uh, and then for find, we're going to say find, um, find matching items, uh, elements inside uh, inside the, um, what do I want to say here? Inside the thing, the, <laughs> um, inside the item element, whatever, uh, parent element. There we go. So selector is going to be a string. Um, and then we're going to actually return dollar sign. We're returning a new instance of our library, the selector string and a new dollar sign instance. Cool. So we should now be able to do something like, uh, where to go? Where's the jQuery version? Here we go. So menu find. Let's give this a try, right? So let 
items equals menu find console log. Let's see if this worked. Um, yeah, so there we go. Now we've got our items here, right? We've got four of them, which is great. So what we're really doing is we're searching inside the first matching parent item and grabbing uh, whatever matching ones we can find with that selector and returning them back out. Um, cool. Uh, let's see. So we've got we've got that done. Let's uh, let's do this. There we go. We can check that one off. Uh, now let's do add class. Um, so uh, we're going to keep this simple. I'm not going to support. Um, well, actually, hold on a second. MDN class list add. Just want to see something real quick here. So uh, does it accept multiples? It does, actually. Let's see. Uh, adds the given tokens to the list, omitting any that are present. Cool. So we actually don't even have to do anything special there to support multiple classes. But here's what we're going to do. So we're going to say add class. Um, and we want to accept multiple classes. So we're going to use a, um, we're going to do this. We're going to call it classes. And we're going to use a, um, a rest parameter here. So this is going to take any arguments that are passed in and bundle them up into a single array for us. So we'll do this, right? So we'll go um, add classes to an element or to, actually we should say all elements. One of the things jQuery does is it will grab all elements that match a selector and easily let you do things to all of them. Uh, so uh, we're going to call this, uh, this is string classes, the classes to add. Uh, and then here we are going to say this LMs. Well, actually, no, we'll do our for of loop here. So for let item of this LMs. Uh, so we're going to loop through each of our elements. Uh, and for each item, we are going to item class list add. And then uh, this is going to get confusing, but so classes is an array of classes that were passed in. And then we want to break that back up into a bunch of comma separated items to pass into the argument here. So we are going to use the spread operator, which uses the same three dots, but it's a different thing. So we're going to go like that. Uh, and that's going to like, let's say we called this with, um, you know, something like, I hate foo and bar. So let's use better examples here. Uh, so let's go wizard and spells. Um, classes here will be wizard spells. And then when we use the spread operator, it gets passed back in like this. Uh, so we can combine those two to get us what we want very simply. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing with remove class. So we will, we'll just copy paste this remove class. So we'll say remove classes from all elements, classes to remove. Uh, and then instead of class list add, we'll go class list remove. Um, and let's start there and then we'll get to this part. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to copy this. Um, and we're going to see this in action. So we've got our menu, menu, find li item, add class, remove class. I'm going to comment these out for a minute. Um, we'll stop there. Uh, now one thing, jQuery supports is chaining. So for us to support that, what we're going to do is we're going to return this at the end of each of our methods. And in the context of classes and object-oriented programming, this is the instance. So if I return this after doing my stuff, I'm returning back out the instance, which means you can then access additional methods on that instance. So we do the thing, we return this. Uh, if we jump over to the browser, 
and reload. I have no errors, that's good. Uh, and we can see that bar is gone and all of the items have foo. So our class list methods are working. Now let's do the CSS method. Uh, and so we're going to say um, key and value for this one, uh, or I guess let's say property, right? Property and value. Um, so uh, add or um, yeah, set CSS on an element. So the property is a string, the value is a string, uh, and we are going to um, the property to set, the value to set it to, or the value to use. I don't know. I don't know a good way to, to write that is. So we're just going to copy paste this, right? We're looping through each element, uh, and then we're going to say item style. Uh, now, one of the things here we potentially need to think about is jQuery lets you define these um, as traditional CSS, these properties, right? So here I'm doing uh, you know, background dash color, but in JavaScript, it is background color camel case. So we can either force people to do it um, like the JavaScript way, or we can support doing it with CSS. Uh, so let's think about this. Um, let's, let's support doing it the CSS way. So um, we can, we'll do this, right? So we'll say let, uh, let parts equals. <laughs> and um, I'm going to take the property. We're not going to do this in the loop. Let's do this. Let parts equals prop split uh, dash. So that's going to give us a bunch of parts. Uh, and if we were to, um, oh, so just so you know, so the string split method is going to take a string and convert it into an array, splitting it based on whatever you pass in. So in this case, if we passed in background color, we'd have an array with background and color as the two items in there. Um, and we want to loop through that and uppercase the first letter of each one except for the first. Um, hmm. Okay. Uh, so I don't really want to use regex for this. I could, but I don't want to. Um, so um, let's, because I hate regex. So <laughs> let's do this. Let's, um, we're going to say here, convert CSS naming to JavaScript naming. Uh, so we are going to, um, uh, we're going to say parts for each function, part index, uh, and, um, we actually want to map this instead. So let's let prop equal, um, and instead of for each, we'll use map. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through each item in parts and create a new array. We're overwriting our prop variable. You'll see why in a minute. We're going to recombine it into a string. Um, and so for each one, we're going to say um, if index equals zero, we're just going to return the part as is. Um, otherwise, we want to capitalize the first letter. So we're going to then use the array splice method to convert um, the first letter of the string. We're going to replace it. Um, so uh, it accepts multiple arguments. Um, here, let's actually pull up the MDN article on this because uh, it is easier to work with. Uh, so we've got start, how many items to delete, 
Um, and then uh, an optional what to replace them with. Um, so uh, in our case, we are going to um, we're going to return. Uh, well, actually, I guess we'll modify it in place first. So we're going to say part. Uh, we're going to um, split it into an array. Uh, and then we are going to splice it. Uh, and we are going to start with index 0. Uh, we are going to delete one item. And then we're going to replace it with, um, I guess we actually need to, we're going to do this actually, because we need to, we need to do this, um, array splice, um, array zero to uppercase, uh, and then we'll return array join. Uh, I'm not 100% sure this is going to work. So we're going to find out. Um, <laughs> uh, so then we can do uh, prop equals val, and this will maybe work. We're going we're gonna to try this one out right now. So let's see what happens here. Let's jump back over. I expect errors to happen. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, so let's console log prop. Oh, right, because this is an array. So let's join back together. Yes, now it works. Okay, cool. So let me let me explain what the hell I actually did here. So um, uh, we are uh, creating an an array from our property, and then we are going to loop through it and create a new array where uh, if it's the first item we just return it as is otherwise we take each letter of that property we split it into an array we grab the first item and replace it with an uppercase version of itself and uh, then we recombine them back into a string and then we take this array and we join it back together into a string so we're effectively updating our property with a, uh, a camel cased version of itself. And we actually don't even need to, uh, we don't need to do this. We can just, we can do that. Um, we can cut out kind of defining that variable here. Uh, and now we are able to, we were able to do this. The last thing we need to do is this attribute uh, bit here. Um, I believe jQuery has an attribute method. Let's um, let's see. So the attribute name and the attribute value, perfect. Uh, so we can um, we can handle that one as is. So we've done we've done this, this, and this. The last thing we want to do is add this attribute method, uh, so that we can we can do this. We're gonna say attribute hidden. And I actually don't even want to have to pass in the second argument. Um, so let's go ahead and create an attribute. We're going to do, instead of property, we'll call that attribute value. Uh, and we'll say um, set an attribute on elements. It should be on elements, not an element. Um, and then... Uh, we're going to have string, string. We've got the attribute to set, the attribute value. And now I want this to be optional, so I'm going to use an empty string as a default value there. Uh, and we will we'll copy paste this in. We don't need to do this part, but for each um, for each item, I'm going to set attribute, attribute, val, just like that. Um, and I should now be able to also do this. And if we jump over to the browser, yes, that's exactly what happens. Our items are hidden. Cool. Uh, so we can, we can comment this part out. 
We'll leave the original jQuery. Um, but so now we've got this little jQuery Lite kind of library here where we are able to author our code very similar to jQuery and chain it all together and do all of the same things, but we're not loading a 30 kilobyte library to do it. And in real world, I generally don't create my own libraries like this. I just use the more verbose version of the code. Um, but if you ever wanted to understand how jQuery works under the hood or create your own utility library for internal use, um, you can do that relatively easily. If you want to dig into the uh, methods and approaches and techniques that I used in this video, um, you can do that in a couple of different ways. The first is with my vanilla JavaScript pocket guides. The writing JS libraries guide covers all of the stuff that we looked at in this particular video. Uh, and it goes into some more detail with some different techniques and things you can do. You can also get that as part of my level up bundle and you can save 40% on this and a handful of other guides if you do that. Um, I also run a project-based workshop uh, where you'll get to work on projects like this with a bunch of other students. And for this type of project, you wanna look at the structure and scale workshop. And in this one, um, we build a handful of really cool things, including a dice rolling app, um, a treasure chest library, and a Seven Seas app, uh, a travel app for pirates um, that incorporates a bunch of the stuff we work on before we get to that project. Uh, and you can learn more about that over at vanillajsacademy.com. I'm going to drop the source code from today's project as well as Ari's original article and the link to the previous video down in the description below. If you like this video, please like it, give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you wanna get more videos like this and don't forget to hit that bell icon so you get all your notifications. And if you really liked it, I'd love if you shared it with other people so my channel can continue to grow. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your week. Cheers.